Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In our last video, we looked at taking the limit definition of the derivative to find the derivative of a function. Here we're actually going to find the derivative of a function at some particular x value. So the derivative of a function f of x at some x value c is given by this formula f prime of c equals the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. So really the idea is imagine that you have at some particular x value c, so you would have a y value of f of c. Think about that as a point and we have some other point. In general we just call x comma f of x. And the idea is this derivative at c will be as we take this point x comma f of x and move it closer and closer to c comma f of c, then our slope of our secant line will become closer and closer to the slope of our tangent line. And that's what we're doing when we're finding the derivative of a function at an x value. We're finding at that particular x value what is the slope of the tangent line. And in this video, we're going to use this limit definition to do it. So we're going to find the derivative of f of x equals square root x at the value x equals 4. We're going to use our definition that we have up here. So if we say f prime of c, in this case, we're talking about f prime of 4, the particular x value that we're looking around. So we'll go ahead and say that will be the limit as x approaches c. So here it will be a limit as x approaches 4. And then we'll have f of x minus f of c. So f of x is just our function. And then minus f of c just says plug c, which is 4, into the function. So that would be square root 4. And then on the bottom, in the denominator, we just simply have x minus c, which in this case is going to be x minus 4. Let's go ahead and simplify our square root 4. So we'll have limit as x approaches 4 of square root x minus 2 and that's going to be over x minus 4 and so now we'll have to figure out how to evaluate this limit. You'll notice if we try to just plug in 4 we'll get the square root of 4 which is 2 minus 2 that's going to be 0 you get 4 minus 4 on the bottom as well 0 over 0 as a limit we can't really tell what that is so in this case if you think about from our video about evaluating limits algebraically when you have a root plus or minus something else as a two-term numerator or denominator you might multiply by the conjugate if you recall we did that in a previous video so in this example we will multiply by square root x plus 2 Remember the conjugate is the same two terms with the opposite operation in between. So we'll do the same thing on the top and the bottom, which we need to do so that we don't change the value of the fraction. So we're gonna distribute on the top. Let's go ahead and do that. So that will be equal to the limit as x approaches four of root x times root x will give me x. Now remember with a conjugate, the outside and inside terms will add up to zero. So I get a positive two root x there. Inside term, I get a negative two root x. So then when I take the last times the last, I will get negative two times two, that will give me minus four. You might already see what we're going to end up doing with that, right? So I'm going to not distribute on the bottom for that reason. So I'll have x minus 4 times the quantity root x plus 2. And the reason we're not distributing on the bottom is you can see our x minus 4 will reduce the factor x minus 4 on the bottom. Both of those will become a 1. And so we end up with the limit as x approaches 4 of... 1 over the square root of x plus 2. And now this is well behaved at 4. I can just plug in at 4. There's no divide by 0 or anything crazy like that. So we get 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2. And of course the square root of 4 is another 2. right? So that's just going to give us 1 over 2 plus 2, also known as 1 fourth. Let's look at one more example here. We've got a rational function. We're going to find the derivative of f of x equals 1 over x plus 2. We're going to do it at the value x equals 3. So this is our c here. So we'll go ahead and say that f prime of c, which is f prime of 3, is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. So I go ahead and just leave my 1 over x plus 2 minus, so we've done that part, f of c, I plug in c, so that would be 1 over 3 plus 2, 
and then all of that is going to be over x minus c and so in this case that will be x minus 3. Alright, let's go ahead and do some simplifying up in the top here. We'll have the limit as x approaches 3 and this will be 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over 5. We'll have those terms all over x minus 3 and what you might notice when we go to plug in 3 and see if we can evaluate, it's not so good. You can see easily we get 0 on the bottom. On the top we'd get 1 over 5 minus 1 over 5, so we'd have a 0 over 0 in this case. One thing we can do when we're using this difference quotient limit, we can get a common denominator. So I'm going to take this fraction and multiply by 5 on the top and the bottom and then I would need an x plus 2 to get a common denominator. So x plus 2 goes into this fraction. And then we'll go ahead and do some simplifying with this. So that will give us the limit as x approaches 3 of 5 over, I'm going to go ahead and leave the 5 out. Later on if we have a need to distribute, we'll go ahead and distribute, but 5 over 5x five plus 2, and then minus, I have x plus 2 on the top, times 1, over my 5 times x plus 2, and what we'll do is just think about combining this numerator all into one fraction, so we'll put these together and that'll of course still be over x minus 3. So if we go ahead and put them together, we'll have the limit as x approaches 3 of, be careful when you distribute here, there's more than one term in this numerator. We have minus x and then minus 2. Right, so I have 5 minus 2, that's going to give me 3, and then I'll also have the minus x. So end up with 3 minus x, and then we have 5 times x plus 2, and all of that is over x minus 3. And what you probably see right now is that it sure looks like 3 minus x and x minus 3 will reduce. And they, they will, but we have to do something to it. And you notice in the top one we have a positive 3 and a negative x. And in the bottom one we have a negative 3 and a positive x. So really these are exact multiples of each other, but they're off by a negative, right? So what we'll need to do is from one of them, if I factor out a negative 1, then I think we can see what happens. I'll factor a negative 1 out from the top. So that's going to change the sign here. So my x is going to be the positive piece and then my 3 will be the negative piece if I factor out a negative 1. You can see if we distributed this back in you'd get the same thing there. Uh, so that will be over the 5 times the quantity x plus 2 and then that will be over the x minus 3. And if I move down just a little bit here, I think you can probably see what we've got. So instead of dividing by x minus 3, let's go ahead and think of it as multiplying by the reciprocal instead. And you'll notice the x minus 3 is on top, the x minus 3 here is on bottom, so those can reduce to 1's. And so then we end up getting the limit as x approaches 3 uh, we have negative 1 times 1 times 1, so negative 1 on the top. And on the bottom we really just have 5 times this quantity x plus 2. And now you'll notice that 3 is no problem. We're not going to get divided by 0 or anything weird with this. So we can just go ahead and plug in 3 and say what do we get from this? Well we get negative 1 over 5 times 3 plus 2 would be another 5. So that's just going to give us 25. So negative 1 over 25 is the slope of our tangent line for this function at this x value. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.